Hello, hello, everyone. Hello. How's everybody doing today? Pretty active Monday uh, with SGLB. Big runner yesterday, which we also said would uh, most likely fade. So, um, but we also uh, uh, took a new position at Roblox. Uh, we had were watching the tape. I, it was like, I think it was right around New York lunch. And a 2.1 million buyer came in. And it was just pretty sizable position. You're talking about 34,000 shares on a 70 plus dollar stock. And it was at like a very clear round number price, 71. So most likely an institution. And the thing shot up instantly and we bought on the pullback and then it skyrocketed on the day. So yeah, it's quite an, quite an interesting session. Uh, definitely, definitely got a little, like a little late push, but SGLB was pretty much rocking through most of the session. So we were doing some short-term day trades and scalping on that, which was pretty cool. Um, Cause we were a good amount of them. But I feel like I definitely missed some trades for sure. Definitely missed some locations. And so I'm continuing to work on that. Yanni's saying this week you're up 4.73%. Nicely done. Yeah, we ran the stats. We're thinking about, <clears throat> so last year we did our yearly performance, publish the stats. I'm thinking about uh, publishing stats every quarter. I'm considering, I mean, it's, I don't know if it'll do a whole lot or anything like that, but yeah, we're thinking it, we're debating publishing just quarterly results every quarter or waiting till the end of the year. So what do you all say? Should I publish quarterly or would, does it really matter that much to you wait to the end of the year? I'm curious what you think. Hello to you, Yolk Sun. Jesse Liverless. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. It's a good name. Yanni saying, uh, Kaikili means hello everyone. Oh, okay, cool. Nice. Learning my finish every day. <laughs> Not really every day, once in a while. So tell me what you think in the comments in the chat here. A um, couple things to note today before we get into today's session. So we have FOMC tomorrow. And that is most likely going to cause traders to not take a whole lot of active positions. There's definitely going to be some reduced volatility today, I suspect, because of that. So traders are going to be a little bit hesitant to take positions. Um, I will note that, and this is kind of what we were telling our members yesterday in our pre-market live stream, which was that the way Gamma was moving on options positioning, it was pulling you know, the calls up towards 400 in SPY. And SPY was around 393. And so we felt like this was good, this continuation of this was going to pull the SPY higher and higher into the 400 strike. And so it's up overnight. It's doing that right now. And so, um, yeah. So with that being said, we expect, I think there was like 100,000 SPY calls for the 400 strike bought yesterday. So that's going to continue to just kind of pull like a magnet on the SPY higher. So we're expecting, we're expecting 400 to probably hit sometime today or tomorrow this week for sure. Um, but we expect a little bit of reduced volatility today because of the FOMC. We also have not only month-end OPEX options expiry come this 19th, but we also have quarterly options expiry. So we have a lot of options expiring. Certain stocks have somewhere between 30 and 50% of all their options expiring this Friday. So that's going to reduce volatility, in my opinion, early next week unless we get some sort of catalyst coming in. Who knows, maybe the FOMC will provide a catalyst of that sort. But we suspect that after this, you know, Friday OPEX and quarterly OPEX, that volatility is going to contract a little bit early next week. So it could be a slow start to next week. Um, we're probably anticipating somewhere about a 1% to 1.5% range in SPY today. Qs will have a little more volatility. Um, gamma is still pretty strong in that one right now. And it seems to be moving around a little bit. So there's still a lot of adjustments going on in queues. Queues had the three week sell off, and then this last week it's been it's been up and it closed up, and then now it's posting another bullish week so far. So, so yeah, that's kind of what we're expecting on that. Let's see here. Terrapin Piper says good short the pond. Uh, okay. Terrapin Piper, if you have questions, what we do is we do an open Q&A after all this is done. And we'll have a lot larger open Q&A today because there isn't a whole lot moving pre-market. So what we do is we have an open Q&A session towards the end where anybody can ask any questions on instruments. Uh, any instrument, any time frame, doesn't matter. 
And the three requirements are you got to list the instrument symbol, the time frame, one sentence description, bullish or bearish. So that's uh, that's it there. So far, everybody's saying quarterly, quarterly, quarterly. Javier says yearly is good. <clears throat> okay, so everybody's voting in so far quarterly. Okay, we'll probably do one then uh, once March closes. So um, I was running the stats yesterday, and so uh, you know we're off to a great start this year. We've had a little bit of a I don't even want to call it a, a pullback. We haven't had a pullback in our profits. It's just been a corrective structure. So it's funny. I'm using chart terms to describe my my P and L line. Um, but yeah, January, February, very strong months, and then March, uh, not quite as much, but mostly because we're unwinding some losses in our portfolio, and we had the three weeks of down weeks. We were unwinding some of our some of our trades, thinning out some of the positions, but. We're definitely not uh, negative on the month. We're profit on the month, and we still have we still have a fair amount of time left this month to have a strong month. And I have a feeling that a lot of these positions that I've been holding on to will some of them will turn profitable. Many have already switched profitable, like a Freya and a few others. So, um, but let's take a look at uh, SPY Qs and then Bitcoin. <clears throat> SPY strong pre market. So closed 396, uh, a little bit of a dip, and then it's pushing up a little bit. So good late day push yesterday. That bounce off of 392, just incredibly strong buying. That is just to get this kind of consistent buying where you only have like a few dips below the 20 EMA. Yeah, that's a that's a three point plus move in the SPY. And to get it to be that consistent, that was just steady buying probably a lot of dealer buying uh going into that i mean it's just so steady and so consistent so um and then after a little bit of pullback rip into the close very strong rip into the close you're talking 394 to 396 so two point rip in the last half hour so a lot of end of session buys and things like that mutual funds uh certain rebalancing also probably dealers hedging their positions that have built up throughout the day. You can see the volume increase pretty good right around here and then a big rip in towards the end. So we're expecting SPY to continue to pull into that 400 strike. You know, now that we've cleared out the all-time highs, um, you know, after a three-week dip, very strong bounce. SPY held the best during this three-week dip. Q's got slaughtered, you know, just murdered. Um, whereas SPY held its own and did be did one of the best, that and Dow Jones. And so now that it's clearing out that weekly high, I don't really see anything stopping it from hitting 400 in my opinion. So that's kind of what I'm looking at on SPY right now. But again, I'm expecting volatility to be a little bit muted today, maybe one 1.5% 1 range for the day. Um, Q's going to have more volatility in that. So this was the three-week rip, much bigger sell-off, good bounce. This has yet to clear the third week of selling, whereas the SPI has already cleared it and back up above the all-time highs. Q's is still recovering a lot. So it needs to clear out 320. Uh, that's going to be a key strike. And then 325, I think, is going to be the next key strike. There's still a lot of gamma moving around in Q's, I think, because this three-week sell-off caused a fair amount of repositioning. And then the bounce is probably giving a lot of traders thoughts like, okay, we think this is over. We can start getting into certain positions. Even some of my traders were starting to get back into positions and stocks that we were long leading into this. They sold off heavy. And now they're, a lot of them are saying in the channel, like, hey, we feel like this is going to bounce. It's already, you know, it's going to bounce higher. It's already strong. So um, I, I agree with that sentiment completely. I think my traders are totally on point. So looking at the pre-market session here, same thing, you know, the big rip, much bigger rip into the close, um, much bigger volume going into the close yesterday. So corrective structure, pre-market opens, rip, and it's just been holding up there. So I think we're gonna probably pull into 325 um, sometime this week. That's that's kind of what I'm expecting. I don't see any, I don't see any like heavy options position. I'm just looking at my notes. I don't see any heavens options positioning until, let's look at, yeah, until 3.30. I think if we can clear 317, 318, well, we're past that. So we're past that. Yeah. I think 330. And then I think things will slow down a bit if we get to that this week. But who knows? It all depends on what F uh, Powell says tomorrow. That's going to be key. 
Okay, and let's check Bitcoin and then I'll check into some Q&A and then we'll look at top movers for the day, some stocks we're in and where we think things are going to go. So Bitcoin retracing a little bit after making on new all-time highs. So let's look at um let's look at 1 hour. So new all-time highs and then corrective pullback then after a bounce off you up, very strong impulsive selling and you can see the impulsive corrective VWAP acting as resistance, impulsive leg down, corrective structure, counter trend impulsive move, hits VWAP, and now we got a little bit of a pullback. So if this pulls back to about here or even back down to here, which is 54.6 down to 53.7, and then bounces and clears this out here, clears out VWAP plus the swing high, then it needs to clear out 57.272, and then it should open up some more fresh upside. But I'm noticing Bitcoin is, <clears throat> while I'm still bullish on Bitcoin, and my personal prediction and opinion is that it's going to hit 100K this year. I don't think it's going to be a straight run to 100K. I am noticing when I look at the weekly charts that some of these, you know, we had a pretty strong rip, three-week pullback that really tested a lot of buyers' metal. Then a new extension beyond that. Very sharp sell-off in Bitcoin. Very sharp sell-off, but recovered quickly. Two weeks later, it's past that. This weekly dip went to the monthly VWAP and has bounced about $200 roughly off the lows, $300 off the lows. No, $200, $200 off the lows. So decent bounce off monthly VWAP. But the fact that it didn't make a long extension above the highs suggests that it's... If this week doesn't close um, above the weekly highs or the all-time highs, if it closes below this, then I think you should expect a little bit more chop in Bitcoin and it'll need to build more of a structure to get out of that. So yeah, I, this was very different. This rip when we broke this prior highs after this corrective structure, it just kept going. This one didn't. It's immediately retraced a little bit. So Bitcoin seems like it might be a little bit exhausted at the moment, um, you know, taking a little bit of a pause. But yeah, we'll need to see how this week ends. This week's going to be key for it and where it ends. Okay, so let's take a look at um, Victor says, Chris, are you familiar with uh, for your short case presentation on Gabriel Graham? I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure to check numbers that were definitely a scam in the past or, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not aware of that. Um, to me, it doesn't really matter. If the money pushes it higher, it's going to push it higher. It, it doesn't really... The one, one of the big research short case, short sellers that I would be concerned about would be Hindenburg Research. When Hindenburg Research publishes a research piece that says, hey, we think this company is a scam, has problems and all kinds of things then you should be concerned. But again, that was also two and a half years ago. So companies probably made adjustments and things have changed in the you know marijuana landscape in the US. House of Representatives last year passing that bill to decriminalize it, not legalize it, but decriminalize it. That was a shot across the bow. I, I don't think that was a one-off event that they were just looking for votes. I think that was a shot across the bow saying, hey, we're looking to move in this direction. And I don't necessarily think that regulators are going to push for it for benevolent reasons. Like they think, oh, it's time. There may be some that will. I think the real reason is going to come down to money. States need tax revenue. We talked about this in our DraftKings video. States need tax revenue. So what? instead of increasing income taxes, being like, oh, okay, well, let's just increase your taxes from 10%, 20% or whatever like that. That takes from the population. So why not create a new form of generating revenue far better than increasing taxes on your population? So I think that's what's going to happen. You're going to see um, a lot of states start to adopt it. You know, Colorado, the numbers were insane. They were one of the first to legalize it. And the tax revenue they generate is absolutely insane. Other states started falling quickly. And it's just the, the genie's out of the bag. More doors are going to start to open on that. So... I think that's part of the reason why you're seeing the bullish case for a lot of marijuana stocks is because they believe that 
legalization or decriminalization is in the near future. And I think a lot of people are positioning for that. So unless Hindenburg research comes out with some major hit piece, then I'm not going to really worry about it too much. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts on that one. Okay. So any other questions before we wrap or uh, move into movers for the day? Doesn't look like it. Okay. So let's look at top movers for the day. So looking at the volume category in the movers section, only one, two, three, four, five, five that are hitting the 600K volume and above. That's not a whole lot. And so this is kind of what we're expecting. Volatility, volume is going to be reduced because of FOMC tomorrow. It means you need to be really picky. You could do some volatility plays in options. You can definitely do that. You know, volatility could pick up like short-term options because volatility will be subdued today. IV implied volatility is going to go down. So with that being said, there's probably going to be a pickup if Powell does something interesting tomorrow. There may not be a whole lot. It may not move markets a whole lot, but it should increase positioning after he kind of comes out, does his speech. Then markets will have a greater idea of how to position. So there might be some short-term volatility plays in there. Um, NTN, one candle move and fade all that. Not very interesting. We're looking for something that rips and then holds. Same thing here, ABUS, you know, 900K volume, but again, rip and then nothing. It's faded most of it. So it's not getting sustained buying. Anciano Therapeutics. It's got, uh, okay, that's why. So you got, you got, a, wow, it's a big, that was yesterday. Okay. So that's a pretty big rip. That's a very big rip. What the heck happened from 77 to 148? What the F? What? Okay. That can't all be, that can't all be earnings coming out tomorrow. That cannot all be, let's see, what was yet? Uh, nothing since, wow. Okay, so let's see if we can find anything. He reported shareholder approval of the merger with Chemomab. Okay. Very interesting. Ah, this is why it didn't come in my scanner. It's above $75. My scanner right now is only set to go to $75. So it's just above that. Mother effort. Um, that is a rip. That is a rip. Okay. So coming also priced in private financing. Okay, so let's see if there's anything else today. If not, then basically what we're getting is there's maybe a second day play today. If not, this may fade a lot of that. I mean, it's already, the highs were 153 and it's already at 125. It's already faded 20%, almost 20%. ANCN, not seeing anything. Down in the dumps. Not for merger came out. It says shares will approve merger came out. Issue inside of shares in connection with pending merger shares also approved. Reverse split. Stocks are 27% in pre market. If that's not right, not that's the wrong price right there. Okay. Anyways. <clears throat> okay. Well, this might be one we'll take a look at. Yeah. Let me add a tab. And CN, see if there's anything here. Might be a fade play. Wait, what? Why is this price? That is weird. That is weird. So the price is 580. Why are they showing that? That Benzinga. That's no bueno. What was the rip yesterday? It did not rip yesterday. No. So 15. Whoa, this coloring is weird. Okay. So it didn't rip. It ripped in aftermarket. It's already faded a lot of that. 444 after. Wow. Okay. It's faded all that. <clears throat> that was weird. Benzinga, you're making me look bad. Bye bye. All right. GameStop fading a lot. Um, if it breaks below this, I think you're going to trip a lot of stops. It does have, it's already below monthly view up. So yeah, GameStop, some whining. It was a good, honest push. Um, it made a pretty good rip. 
after this here, there was some strong buying. It was holding weekly VWAP, um, but pretty impulsive selling yesterday. Very strong selling yesterday. So the key will be for GameStop 172. If it blows below that, then I can see it fading all the way down to, I mean, it's not bad support there because you got, here's the spike low from that, which kind of lines up with that. But I think if it does that, it's going all the way down to 150. Uh, that's, yeah. So moving on from that, XME almost got the dip we wanted. We wanted a dip to 40, it got to 40, 50. We're still waiting for that 40 dip. We are still waiting for that 40 dip. XME blew through multi-year highs this last week. That was the January 18 highs. Haven't been at this price since September 14. This was one of our big bullish bets from last year. We made a fair amount of money on it. We could have made more. We didn't. We let go of some of our positions a little early. And we couldn't catch some of the bounces. So it's kind of a bummer. One of our students killed it on it, though. I think he might even still be holding this thing. Um, right now, I think at this point, I think you're looking at, you know, this 42 to 44 range gets past that. Then you got room to 46. Um, but I do like buying dips, especially to this 39, 69 area here. So any dips on that, I'm going to buy in this one here. You're also seeing volume build. So there's more and more interest, especially to start the year, especially to start the year, a lot of volume. I mean, this is where volume was steady, consistent. We were buying way down here and then we bought through up to here. But then once it ripped out of that, we just missed the breakout and then we couldn't catch it since. So <clears throat> big step up in volume this year. I think you're going to see a lot more institutions and traders take advantage of this here. So if we clear 46, yeah, you got 47, 48. And then after that, there's a lot of room open for mid fifties. So I'm expecting non-precious metal commodities to do pretty well this year. So again, looking for dips. Like see a pullback here, gets to this kind of point here. And then we'll look to get long. That's what we're looking on that one. <clears throat> DKNG, we're long. We added to our position yesterday. Um, let's see here. DKNG had a, started off good and then hit the highs and then faded a lot of that late day selling, which is quite a lot. I mean, it's just below the nine and the 20, the, all the way down. But overnight session, dip buyers came in. So it's up $2 off the lows, which is not bad. It's like about two and a half, three percent off the lows. And it's building. What was, <clears throat> yeah, nothing. We didn't run into any support or anything like that. So I was expecting a dip more to like 65, which I'd probably add to my position. Yeah, let me put an alert there for 65.44. But yeah, the fact that it hit this and it's faded since then makes me less excited, but it's up pre-market. If it gets back up here, then it's building a case. Now it's building like a new floor. So, and there's a resistance. So if it can continue to build, then I suspect an upside breakout. We did a video on this last week. Check out our video on DraftKings on this one here. Uh, Kathy would have ARK Invest. They've initiated a position. I think that's just going to bring in more and more money into DraftKings. So hopefully we get another long. Last year, DraftKings was our number one stock. Bought at 26, exited the final position out at 54. Um, traded several times inside that range all, you know, all last year. Option stocks, the whole thing. We suspect that DraftKings could have another strong run this year. So it definitely has some more hurdles this year into the last year, but it's also getting some fresh wins from the ARK Invest for sure. So that's what we're looking on that. DKNG had a direct offering, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> um, what, two more, and then uh, we'll go to open Q&A. How are we doing on time? Four minutes to open. I'm not expecting this open to be gangbusters. So uh, Afria, um, all cannabis stocks are bouncing. Afria had a really good day yesterday. We're still, we're still longer our Afria position. Um, we're in the money on that position right now. We held through the drop. We were in profit. Then the big drop of the three weeks, tech stocks, including Afria, got hit. It's already back up. Uh, above that. So there's a pretty good base around 22. And then here's where the breakout is 2140. So we're looking for dips to this to add and reload. This is kind of a false break, you know, corrective structure rip and then back down and the fact that we're below this. So I'm a little 
more cautious about adding there and prefer adding on a slightly bigger dip. So I already have, um, yeah, I'm looking to buy on dips on this one here, but I think Afria is building more and more of its bullish case. Like, I feel like we have a very good bottom in at 15, a very strong bottom at 15. So pre-market is above this here. There's not a whole lot of liquidity between here and here. Let me see. Uh, let me check some, let's see what's going on with the options position real quick. Give me one second. Uh, for you, where is, let's see uh, like what's going on with options, expiries and. Okay, so there's a big increase in calls once we, once we broke 18. Let's see where 18 is on the, let's go to one hour. So 18 right here. Okay, so big rip. So we had a big increase in calls once we got to 18. Rip, pre-market, holds on a pullback, we view up, and then just continues higher. So that's where the calls really started to separate from the puts. Yeah. And then, wow. Okay, so about 48% of its gamma is expiring this Friday. That's the largest gamma strike out there. This Friday is monthly OPEX for, for uh, monthly options. But there's still a lot of delta... Hold so there's a lot of people that have leaps long, uh, they have long term uh, option contracts on Afria going to January next year. So it's a lot of bullish bets on Afria this year. <clears throat> so I think we're probably going to see a little bit of pullback in the stock, but dips to 20 because we look at 20, that's yeah, that's kind of like a hedge wall in terms of calls and puts. <clears throat> Yeah, it's where a lot of dealers would probably have to or probably have hedged their positions. So, yeah, I like dips on this one here. <clears throat> I think 20 is going to be pretty well supported. So, yeah, this right here ran into this resistance here. Makes sense for a little bit of pullback. I'm definitely going to reload on dips without a doubt. Yeah, I'm liking a free even more and more. We might get a little bit of pullback this Friday when you have 40% of its gamma options expiring on this Friday that reduces liquidity <coughs> and reduces positioning. So it'll take a few days and then people will reload on it. So yeah, probably going to have a little bit of a pullback on this. Tom Lindbergh says, hi, I'm late. It's all good. I'm still here. All right. Um, last one, Roblox. And then we will look at uh, open Q and a real quick Roblox screaming in pre-market. As we watched, uh, as we mentioned in our, uh, private member discord channel. Uh, as I was watching the tape in real time yesterday, let's see if I can get you the post. There it is 10 46 AM. So here, I'll get that for you in a second. <clears throat> the bell has rung. The market is open. All right, so we posted this yesterday for members. <coughs> 10.46 a.m. Pacific, in case you don't know. 31K buyout in Roblox came in at 71. Likely institution at that price and size over 2 million. It's like 2.3, 2.4 million. Sure to was supportive. We immediately put a limit order at 71.03. That was 10.46. And so where is 10.46? There we go. So this is it right here. This is the breakout. It was, it was building a breakout structure leading into it. You can see it for those of you who studied my breakout strategy and structure, classic, classic breakout structure. So right here is when that comes in. That's that candle right there, 1042. And I saw the shot and I was like, wait a minute. And so I started looking, it just, price just shot up in one candle. This is a five minute candle, it went from 783. Yeah, it went up like, 40 cents just like that and then climbed all the way up to 71.49 so it went up 70 cents in a matter of like 15 this is a one minute <clears throat> hello okay so get over here what are you doing there it is right there in one minute <clears throat> 80 cents <clears throat> that is not normal especially 45 minutes after New York lunch. <clears throat> so as soon as that happened, 
1046, this five minute candle here, right when this closes this one open, put the note for our members there to let them know in real time. As soon as it happened, I was like, what the F? And so I started looking through the tape and I'm like, whoa, 2.3 million order came through. So we put an order at 7103, came right back to it, activated, skyrocketed up. I could have closed here, just been like, hey, I'm done with it. But I believe this is overall supportive for RBLX. Whoever bought that, and it was at 71 flat. <clears throat> Nobody comes in with that much size. <clears throat> Nobody comes in with that much size at that round of number and not be, I mean, that's almost always, that's an institution. Almost always. So I think, you know, any dips of 71 are going to be supported in my opinion. And so I think this is just going to continue to press. Had a little bit of a fade pre-market, but it's above 71.52, right to the high of where this went. So this rip buys it, boom, rips, creates a floor, goes right to that. All the dips have been bought at 71.50. It's already up $2 in pre-market. So <clears throat> I'm very bullish on Roblox right now. Called the broker. They said that um, <clears throat> they said that options or options should be available this week on Roblox. They're going to start writing options soon. So I'll check today. I haven't checked today, but um, yeah, they should have options on Roblox this week, which makes it even more uh, of an interest. So okay, <clears throat> yeah, we covered a free ATDJ. We definitely covered it. So definitely take a look at that. Um, <clears throat> Victor's saying that's a thought I had. I know I could benefit from a potential trade set, but something is giving me a moral pause or reflection. Again, that's two years ago. Who knows? Maybe they made changes since then. That's certainly possible. <clears throat> Good von Tarly said, Indian market gone bad today. <clears throat> well, hopefully you've been able to position yourself well and reduce risk. That's part of the reason why we also trade options. Helps neutralize risk in a way that you can't if you're just long or short stocks. <clears throat> Excuse me. My people. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Constantine wants to look at <clears throat> NM Daily. We'll look at NM Daily and then we will get to live trading. And hey now, what's with the alerts? My order got filled on a Freya. You just heard that. NM, which <clears throat> Constantine is MM Navios Maritime. Let's look at the price. Yeah, it is. Okay. That's the right price. <clears throat> Earnings yesterday. Let's take a look at NM, see if I got any news on it. No, nothing. <clears throat> Other than earnings. Okay. So, wait a minute, what did earnings come in at? Let's take a look. It's the 15th. There we go. Right? That doesn't seem right. Huh. <clears throat> that's weird okay so where are we at on obvious i'm just marking that high there got some resistance right around here all the way into 10 wait a minute let's see what's going on on options Hmm. <clears throat> options positioning is not it's not gangster for this there was like we didn't start to see more calls than puts until we passed nine roughly nine and a quarter so it just started to build a slight bullish bias just on the call side um in terms of call gamma but a lot of that call gamma is, it goes flat around 10. And they're really, I don't really see a whole lot of call gamma extending from 10, 11, 12, 13. Maybe when it clears 13, what's that 13? Nothing crazy. Yeah. So, 
And it looks like a, that's a fair amount of options. It's 41% of its gamma is expiring this Friday. That's going to, so there might be some bullishness into Friday, but then come Friday, I could see a huge pullback. Um, yeah, this seems to me like something I'd want to buy in a pullback. Maybe on a pullback to seven. Put her in here. You got that, you got that, you got that. Maybe even six. Yeah. So I think there might be some short-term movement up to 10. Um, what did we say yesterday, members? SGLB is probably going to rip yesterday and fade today. It's exactly what's happening. It's fade almost all its gains. Um, yeah. So if there's like a gentle corrective pullback to here, maybe a short-term play up till just under 10. And then I think after that, I'd probably want to be out. That's just my thoughts. But <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Victor saying, where do you personally check for the calls volume and size? Through your you can do it through your brokerage. TD Ameritrade has that. It'll let you know the calls and puts, you know, your volume activity and things like that. Option statistics. Yeah. Yep. Options up on RBLX. Okay, cool. That means it's probably going to be on uh, Thinkorswim. So that'll be awesome to get some. Uh, that will be awesome. <clears throat> okay, cool. All right. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to wrap it up for today's session. We got to go to live trading with our trading masterclass members. Um, <clears throat> one thing next, definitely hit that like button. If you got something, if you got anything out of it, today's session, something positive, learn something about options, trading, price action, filters, what's going on in the market. Hey, hit the like button. We appreciate that. Helps us with, you know, YouTube, you know, we do this for free. Um, I'm getting a new trading computer next week. My monitors come this Friday and the monitor stands come this Friday. The computer is being constructed right now. It should be here by late next week, probably on, I'm thinking around 24th, 25th, 26th. <clears throat> so once the computer is up <clears throat> and all set up, I'm probably going to do one week, Monday through Thursday. I'll probably have it fully set up next week. If I do, then 29, 30, 31st, and 1st, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm going to do four days of pre-market live streams on YouTube just to kind of test it out, expose it. We're going to have four monitors set up. So we're going from three big ones to four medium-sized ones. So I'm excited about that. But we'll do four days of pre-market live streams. And then we're probably going to do uh, <clears throat> like live streaming trading for trading masterclass members that week as well. So we still haven't decided yet. We still got to see the computer, how everything gets set up and make sure everything's good. But that's what we're looking to do. So keep an eye on that. We'll announce it on the community channel if and when we're going to do that. And then we'll uh, go from there. Um, but that's it. Going to switch to live trading. So good to see everybody today. Victor, Constantine, everybody, TDJ, Lewis, Tom, even though you're late, Tom, it's all good. Good to see everybody from wherever you are chiming in the world. Good luck trading today. Let's go make some money. And I'll see you guys in the green. Be well, everyone.